Hello everyone, welcome to Learning Techniques and I'm your host Heman Gungwar. So today we are going to learn exactly how we can run Ansible inside a Docker container. So let's understand the basic workflow which we are going to follow over here. We will be building uh, the Docker images out of a custom Docker file. After that, we'll be spinning some containers out of it and then finally validating if my Ansible is working fine or not. So without which wasting much time, let's move directly to the demo section. So for that, I have written a Git code for you. Those who are not aware of the Git, uh, they can simply download the files from the GUI as well from the given link. I'll provide in the comment section. So this is my Linux machine where, uh, which I'm using for Docker purpose. So let me first download the code. Is on for me. So let's move inside the edit and see what is providing for us. So these are the SSH based keys. Uh, this is your private key, this is a public key pair. Then uh, there are some Docker files. So those who are uh, aware about Docker, um, they might find it easy, but those who don't have any prior experience with Docker, um, they can simply follow the steps. This section, I'm using a base image of CentOS for which I will be building my custom image. Then uh, we are installing some IP based packages and uh, for the SSH connectivity. In the further step, we are connecting to the EPL repository and installing the Ansible for us. Now, this section, it is going to deal with your SSH key based authentication. After that, we are exposing the port 22 and starting system. Now, there's one other file which we're using deploy the Ansible clients. So let's see that as well. Here, everything is same except the Ansible installation, which is not required on the clients. It only need a, a network and a SSH connectivity and a key basically. So this is all we have. So our first step is first to build a Docker image out of this Docker file. So the command is Docker build. Docker build, then uh, your file name. It's optional if you're using simple Docker file, but we are using two files, so we'll be providing an image name. Then the tag with which you want to tag your uh, new image. So I'm providing a tab, for example, uh, techniques slash Ansible master. And it will look for the file in my current directory. So it may take some time. So I'm pausing my video over here and I'll come back once my video is done. And you can also come back once your video is done. Okay, now my image is built pretty quickly. Let's uh, build second image as well. So for it, uh, we are providing Docker file one and uh, then Ansible client. So it's, it's running all those images, uh, all those steps which are provided in the Docker file and building an image for us. So we have successfully built the image. Now the next step is how we will see the images are there or not. So the command is Docker image ls. And that will help with the newly created images. So as of now, we have the images ready. So move to the next section. So this till here, we have uh, steps and now the next steps to spin the containers for us. So the command is docker and hyphen D. Note the use of privileged over here that we are using so that a system D won't face issues while, uh, but uh, you can simply understand that we are running in a root mode now, docker. So any service inside it can be easily started. So I'm taking the path till here. And After that, the Docker image name. So I'm using my master Docker. So it has been a container for me. Now for the second file, and for the client. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention exactly uh, in this step, we are running a container. So to run a container or spin a container, you can use a Docker run command. Hyphen D means detach mode. 
so that your shell won't be holded by the process. Privilege is more like a sudo for a Linux background. So it's running your doc container with a root mode. Then the name of your container, what name you want to provide. It's also generating a random ID for you. And after that, the image you want to use to connect your container. So now our containers are also ready. So the next command we are going to use to connect or to view our container is Docker PS. So it's only going to show you the containers which are actually running. You can see a container ID is provided to each container and a name is also provided. And the time since when it has created and it's up. So we have uh, successfully spent the container for us. Now, next step is to connect to the containers. So move back to our node section and see what's there. So let's now the next task is to identify our uh, container IP so that we can connect easily to them. Uh, we don't have um, out external networking created as of now. So we have to rely on Docker exit command to connect to our container. So first, Let's load the IP addresses of our machine. So my Ansible master has picked an IP address of 0 0.2. And similarly, note for the client as well. You can also give the ID, so that's fine. Okay, so we have noted both the IP addresses. That will be required while making a connection. Now move to our last command, um, that is to connect to the Docker instances. So the command is Docker exit. And with a flag of INT, it will capture a terminal for you and connect to the name of your Docker container and the command which you want to use to connect it. So let's first copy the command. And okay. Luckily, the name is the same. So we have the IP address of both the machines. So let's keep it handy for ourselves. So we connected to the Docker container. Let's see if we are able to find the Ansible binary inside it or not. So Ansible binary is there. Now, not wasting much time, uh, let's get an inventory with both the IP addresses. Now, first, uh, those who are not comfortable or have a prior experience with Ansible, it's a configuration management tool that require a key-based authentication or a password to connect. So first validate whether a key-based authentication is working fine or not. So it's working fine. And now you try to the self mode as well. That's working fine. Uh, we are using IP address over here because uh, we don't have a DNS configured for the Docker uh, instances. So we have inventory, we have a working connection, and we have Ansible. So let's spin some commands. So I'm using an ad hoc command to test the Ansible functionality. So Ansible, then uh, my amount of hosts which I want to pass. So I want to run my command on all the hosts. Then after that, hyphen. I, my inventory file name, since I'm not using the default Docker, uh, default Ansible configuration, so I'm providing an inventory file name. Then using one module, maybe we can use, firstly use a ping module to test the health of our clients. And it's up there. maybe because uh, it's a Docker container, it's a single process container. So uh, socket response is not uh, enabled over here. So let's move a more generic module and try to run uptime for us for both the containers and see if Ansible is able to work as well. Okay, I made a mistake over here. Okay, um, I use a module, but I haven't provided an argument. So let's provide an argument and see. So we can see Ansible has uh, returned back the values. In the similar manner, uh, once you configure the pseudo permissions, you can run some further commands with uh, Ansible. So maybe uname or 
IP addresses of the machine surfaced. So you can see uh, Ansible is able to connect and fetch and perform the actions fine. Once you have a sudo configured as well, uh, you will be able to use hyphen B option as well. So that's all from my end in this video. And I hope that is actually knowledgeable for you. Please do let me know with your feedback. Thank you very much.